Hello everyone, Amod here from the Target Common YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn about monolithic versus microservices architecture. So let's start with very simple example. Suppose we want to develop an e-commerce website like Amazon. If you see the features of this Amazon website, you might notice we can create an account on Amazon. After creating an account, we can log in, we can view the product, we can select any product, add to the cart and then check out. After placing the order, we can go to our profile and we can view the current status of the order. We can also modify or cancel the order. If you are a seller, then you can list your products on Amazon. Similarly, there will be some ways to send the notification on your email and mobile numbers. Internally, they will have some team who can check the fraud activities also. So basically we have a lot of components in this Amazon website. So if we develop the application by developing all the identified components together within the same project or code base, then we call that application is being developed using monolithic architecture. But if we develop all individual identified components separately in their own code base and expose ways for components to talk to each other, then we call that application is being developed using microservices architecture. So the major difference between monolithic and microservices here is that in the monolithic architecture, we keep all the code related to the business logic together in the one code base or in one project. But in microservices, each component can be developed separately as a project. And these components can talk to each other using some means like APIs. So let's see about monolithic architecture in detail. So monolithic means rigid or consisting of one piece. As you can see the image right hand side. In this one piece only we have all the components. If you see this architecture, generally we have user interface which we can open in any browser using your laptop or mobile devices. Then we have something business logic, then data interface and after that we have some database where we need to store the data related to all the business logic. This business logic can have multiple components like onboarding, product, checkout, fraud, notification, etc. And all these business logics have been developed together as they are same. Just for the reference purpose, I have shown that in the business logic, we have multiple components, but all the codes are within the business logic itself. So this kind of architecture is called monolithic architecture. Let's see some advantages and disadvantages of monolithic architecture. So it is built using single individual unit. That is obvious because we are writing the code for all the components together in the same code base. So these components are tightly coupled. If we have a problem in one business logic, it is possible that it might impact something else. It is developed and deployed together. If you want to change something for the onboarding logic, then your whole system need to be deployed again. So development is simple as long as your application is smaller. But previously, all the major applications have been built using the monolithic architecture only. Even Netflix was created using the monolithic architecture. And there are some companies who have been switched to microservices, but they are coming back to monolithic architecture. So it has development simplicity because we have all the logic together and there no need to maintain so many repositories, no need to worry about the communications, which are the major advantages of microservices. But here we have everything together, so there's no need to worry about those things. And performance might be better because we cannot have the latency here because all the codes are at the same place, whatever method logic you need to use, you need to use within your code base. And due to this, it may save cost as well. Now let's see some disadvantages of monolithic architecture. It is less scalable because components are tightly coupled because a simple line of code also might impact other functionalities. It becomes complex as code base grows. That is obvious because if you write a lot of code in the same code base, then application will be heavy. And also you need to have understanding of all the major flows so that you can change something with confidence. It has maintenance challenge because if the code base is huge, then you need to be very sure before making any changes. And the major disadvantage is that we need to use the same tech stack. So if you're developing any business logic with Java, then we need to use the same Java for all other components as well. We cannot change the tech stack. Now let's jump to microservices architecture. Micro means small. So in the microservices architecture, we have multiple smaller components and these components will talk to each other to serve as an application as a whole. If you compare this image with the monolithic architecture, you can find that 
here all the components have been developed separately they will have their own code base or project like onboarding will have one project product will be another project and different teams can work on these modules all these components may or may not have the database connectivity but that is based on the requirement here all these components can talk to each other easily so to perform checkout they need to check whether user profile is valid or not so they may call onboarding services to get the user profile similarly before placing the order they want to see if that user has any fraud alert or not so checkout service can make a call to fraud services to get the details so here all these components can talk to each other and they can talk internally as well with help of apis and all these apis can be easily integrate to show the information on the ui there might be some api gateways using that this ui can call these services so all these components can be developed using some different tech stacks as well like onboarding can be developed using javascript product can be developed using java or python now let's see some advantages and disadvantages of microservices architecture so application composed of smaller independent services or components that is true then only it is called microservices architecture we don't develop the application as a whole but we develop the application in smaller components each component is developed managed deployed and scaled independently this is very important point since we are developing all the components separately so onboarding team is working on developing the onboarding flows and checkout team is developing the checkout flows so both are developed separately and managed and also if onboarding is doing some changes they can deploy that onboarding services only instead of deploying whole application together like in monolithic architecture and all these components can be scaled independently as well like during the holiday seasons checkout components might getting more traffic so instead of scaling the whole system we can scale the checkout services so that people can easily check out the product so you can see all the components of the application can be developed managed deployed and scaled independently since all are developed separately so obviously they are loosely coupled components and if they want to talk to any other services or components they can talk using apis so components are specific business logic which i have shown you in the previous slides where onboarding checkout those are the business logics eg inter or intra communication of components two components can talk to each other and one component can talk to other internal features of that component itself each components can use different tech stacks to develop but they need to provide the ways so that anyone can communicate to those services components can be tested independent integrated and end to end so if you want to test only onboarding that is possible if you want to see the integration with some different component that is also possible and if you want to test the whole system using all the component that is also possible so the major advantage of this like if if onboarding team has done same changes then onboarding qm will test the onboarding flow only no need to test the other services they can sign off the onboarding changes and that can be deployed let's see some disadvantages of microservices architecture data consistency issues we have seen in the previous image that every component may have their own databases so data related to onboarding or checkout or fraud will be stored in their respective databases like checkout component will not have the user data they need to call onboarding services to get the user details and there might be some data in the fraud table which might not be available in the onboarding so we need to be very careful how we are storing the data there should be only single point of truth from where we can get the correct data we might have communication challenges we can have multiple services and there should be way so that they can communicate each other but when we have multiple services then it will be a problem as well we need to know how can we communicate to other services there should be a proper documentation like what are the apis are exposed it increases cost due to infrastructure we are going to have different project repo for every component we might have different ci cd for each component we need to have multiple systems separately for each services so obviously it is going to increase the cost and we may also observe the latency because codes are not in the same code base so while communicating to other services and getting the response it might take some time so your application might be slow also if the infrastructure is not good in the microservices architecture debugging might be difficult because if something is broken then we need to see the logs at which component it, it has failed so that's all about 
monolithic and microservices architecture. And now if I go to my first slide, you can see why I have written the monolithic and microservices in this font. So in the monolithic, I have kept everything together. But in the microservices, I have given the space. That means M or I or other letters in this microservices are different components. But as a whole, it is one application. So that's all in this video. If you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.